What's Better Today? And welcome to the Leadership Advantage podcast by Dr. John Kenworthy. The Leadership Advantage isn't some magic pill or silver bullet to instant success as a leader, but I'm sharing the art and neuroscience of hacking expert leadership to unstuck your potential in life and work. procrastinator. I can put things off for absolutely no better reason than I don't feel like doing them right now. Of course, I have plenty of excellent excuses and I believe all of them until I choose not to. So I force myself to do the stuff I don't really like doing and keep at it until I do feel like doing it until that moment where I can begin to see the light at the end of the tunnel. I learned that the real origin of that phrase, by the way, way back in 1993, the Stanage Tunnel is the longest and highest canal tunnel in England. And it's on the Huddersfield Narrow Canal between Diggle and Marsden. I lived at the time right above the tunnel on the Diggle side. It was closed when I lived there, slowly being renovated to allow pleasure boats to go through. And I would often break through the barriers of the accompanying train tunnel as well, that blocked the entrance to walk through the tunnel with visitors to my home and to enjoy this unique piece of history. See, not only is the tunnel long, it has a bend. And in the 1800s, you had to leg it to propel your barge through. That is, you would lie on your back with your feet against the walls on either side of the barge and you would walk the walls of the tunnel, pushing it through, because these were horse-drawn barges and horses had to be taken over the hill to rejoin the boat on the other side. This was a hard slog and on the way from Diggle to Marsden, tired barge leggers would be happy to come around the bend and see the light at the end of the tunnel. I digress, but I learned a couple of things from my mentor, Dr. John C. Maxwell, that helped me and many others enormously in getting stuff done. And better still, getting the right stuff done. Here are the five keys to getting the right stuff done. Number one, make choices. Number two is use the Pareto or 80-20 principle. Three, understand if what you're doing is important and or urgent. You'll apply the three R's and use the rule of five. Problem is procrastination, or is it? One of the main reasons you and I procrastinate is that we don't want to give up our options. And it's a real dilemma. Just today, I had to make a choice about a sandwich to eat for lunch. If I took the steak sandwich, that meant I couldn't, or shouldn't at least, take the chicken avocado sandwich. I procrastinated a little while about the decision. See, if I do this, then I won't be able to do that. What if I make the wrong choice? Or what if I should have chosen differently? And then we'll go through past decisions to guide current thinking, but the past is filled with the regrets of if only. If only I had not started smoking when I was nine years old, perhaps today I would not be suffering heart disease. If only I hadn't done that thing first, I wouldn't be facing this problem today. You and I battle these two enemies of making choices through every decision. Maybe you've gotten over the doubts for something, but other matters will leave you prevaricating for hours. Ask a man to choose a paint colour from a chart. Or ask a woman to choose just a single pair of shoes. So, secret number one is that we have to make choices. There are limited time and energy available in a day. 
the secret to getting the right stuff done is choosing to do the right stuff. Duh, of course it is. But how do I choose the right stuff? I'm glad you asked. The second secret key to getting the right stuff done is identifying whether the thing is important and or urgent. Most clients, when I ask them, tell me that they prioritise based on urgency trumping importance. That is, they do the stuff that they should delete because it's urgent and then they don't have time to do the stuff that matters. Our third secret is to apply the 80-20 rule or Pareto analysis. Once I know what is important and what is urgent, I need to identify my top 20% priorities because these are the things that are going to give me 80% of my production and results. See, the idea of Pareto analysis is that 20% of activity produces 80% of result. It follows pretty well throughout all aspects of life. 20% of the salespeople deliver 80% of the sales. 20% of your products deliver 80% of your profit. In the same way, 20% of your own effort produces 80% of your results. Our fourth key is to apply the three R's. Again, it was Dr. John C. Maxwell who suggests this, and I've shared this with many clients and it works well and better than other ways of prioritizing or so-called time management. We use the three R's of prioritization. These are what is required, what gives me the greatest return, and what gives me the greatest reward. So number one, what is required of me? Any realistic assessment of priorities in any area of life must start with a realistic assessment of what you must do. For you to be a good spouse or parent, what is required of you? To satisfy your employer, what must you do? If you lead others, then what must you personally do that cannot be delegated to anyone else? Then number two, what gives me the greatest return? As you progress in your career, you begin to discover that some activities yield a much higher return for the effort than others. After determining requirements, focus on choices with a high return on investment, ROI. And then thirdly, what gives me the greatest reward? If you do only what you must, along with what is effective, then you will probably be highly productive, but you may not be content. I think it's kind of also important to consider what gives you personal satisfaction. And a very important note here, these questions are meant to be asked in order. Many of us would love to skip down to number three and focus on the most rewarding, fun, exciting activities. Mm. But no one can be successful who doesn't possess the discipline to take care of the first two areas before adding. You take your list of important, not urgent, or important and urgent things, and pass them through the three tests. Anything that can or should be done by someone else needs to be, well, done by someone else, i.e. you delegate it. And make sure that you keep some things in reward or you will be highly productive and miserable. This is all well and good, job, but there are some very important things that I must do because it is my job, but I'm not especially good at doing them and I don't really enjoy them either. Well, this is often the result of that great work of fiction you call your CV or resume. That experience that helped you land the job that had a tiny element of exaggeration in it. Or the fancy job title that really didn't quite capture your actual tasks. It's okay, I understand. I was called a manager for many years when most of the time I was actually cleaning toilets, changing beds, working on a bar, waiting on tables and washing the pots. And there are some things that you really need to do that will progress your career or business and right now you ain't that good at them. Many of you want to develop your softer skills, your EQ and your influencing skills, but the deliberate practice of them simply doesn't fit into your schedule. 
They are important, not so urgent, and definitely required of you and will provide a great return later. Such things are ideal for our fifth secret key, the rule of five. Another John C. Maxwell favourite of mine, the rule of five is simply an easy to remember list of things that you need to do every single day. They are part of your top 20% important priorities and they need to be done daily. The basis is simple. If you have a tree that you need to chop down and you take an axe to that tree every day and take just five swings of the axe at that tree, eventually that tree will come down. If you want to get better at building relationships, for example, decide that every day you will greet five people with a smile and a and an appropriate greeting. If you want to grow your business, you might choose to connect with five new people every day. If you want to spend time at home with your kids, you might dedicate just five minutes a day, one-on-one time with each child before work. Hey, you may think that's very little time, but that's more than most working parents manage to do. Your rule of five is the things that are so important to you and your future that they must be done every single day. It is five important things that are important and not urgent. And they are required of you and give you the greatest return, either now or in the future, and give you the greatest reward, now or in the future, and they are a top 20% priority and need to be done every. On the show notes, I've got a flow chart that shows you the decision process on how to prioritize all your regular daily or weekly or monthly tasks and activities. The best way of approaching your radical getting stuff done makeover is to make a list of everything that you do on a daily basis. If this next week is typical for you, grab a notepad or your phone and note what you do each day. And I mean detailed. Everything that you're doing. Keep at it throughout the day, four or five times, on a regular basis, looking back over the past couple of hours, what did I do? And so on. Noting what you did and for how long. Use your schedule, your calendar to remind you if needed, or even keep an accurate track of everything with one of those activity trackers on your computer and phone. Then from your long list, identify what's important and what's urgent. Was it required? Did it give a great return? Is it rewarding for you personally? Is it a top 20% priority? In other words, it will give you 80% of your results. Or it's one of those that will. And does it need to be every single day? Delete everything that is not important and not urgent. Delegate everything that can or should be delegated. Date everything that is scheduled that you should focus your attention on, your top 20%, and do everything that is both important and urgent. Invest your time this coming week in this process. You can use or adapt a spreadsheet that I've got on the show notes for you. And within another couple of weeks, once you apply these five secret keys, you will wonder what would have happened if you had done this sooner. Or perhaps, if only you had done this sooner, you would now be so much healthier, happier, and so much more productive, and yet seemingly effortlessly. You too will see the light at the end of the tunnel. Be greatly blessed and highly favoured. I hope that you really enjoyed this episode and will share some highlights with the people you care about most. My team and I are working on a series of exciting new projects in this art and neuroscience of hacking expert leadership to unstuck your true potential in life and work. To learn more, visit leadershipadvantage.com or just search for Dr. John Kenworthy and connect with me.